Welcome to the Robert Half Spotlight Information Session hosted by the Noble Works Job Center, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Rhonda Pryor, and I am a business liaison at Noble Works, and I have the privilege and honor of hosting our webinar today. We are so excited to host Robert Half again. Representatives will share information on the company, including tips on working with a staffing agency and what they seek in candidates, as well as trends in the Silicon Valley job market and lessons on how to keep your skills marketable to get paid what you're worth. At the end of their presentation, we will have a Q&A period. So after I share some housekeeping rules, we will hear from our featured employer and wrap up with some final thoughts. Closed caption live transcript is available for this webinar. Click the CC live script button on your Zoom screen and select from the pop-up menu how you want to view the transcription. For those of you who do not see, who do not want to see the closed caption, you can hide subtitles. Also, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available on the NovaWorks YouTube channel. To limit distractions in our virtual environment, we have muted everyone. For those of you participating online, you can present your questions through the Q&A feature on your Zoom screen. And if you get bumped off the internet at any point during our webinar as an alternative, you can call in to hear the rest of it. At this time, I'd like to introduce Neville Bendiola, Branch Director and Vice President with Robert Half. Let's welcome Neville. Thank you so much, Rhonda, for having us. We're really excited to partner with your organization and help as many of your uh, participants um, in their job search. Um, I did want to do a quick introduction. I'm Neville Bendiola from our San Mateo branch uh, here on the peninsula. I've been with Robert Half since 2004, and I oversee our contract staffing services in accounting and finance and administrative and customer service. I do have two partners of mine joining as well, so I'd love to introduce Samir and Tony. So I'll go ahead and let Samir introduce himself. Thanks, Neville. I'm Samir. I've been with Robert Half uh, since 2015, uh, supporting uh, legal staffing services uh, here in the peninsula. Uh, so obviously, you know, we work with law firms, but, you know, a lot of these tech companies as well here in the area staffing any, any, legals they, any legal needs they need from attorney level to entry level uh, positions. And <clears throat> my name is Tony Cortezzi, and I'm a talent manager for uh, the administrative and customer support um, sector of Robert Half supporting the San Mateo Peninsula area. Um, I've been with Robert Half for about two years now, and um, we recruit anything from file clerks and receptionists up to executive assistants supporting C-level executives. And yeah, it, uh, we have several positions that we work with. Thank you, Samir and Tony. Well, I'm gonna kick off uh, the conversation. I, I do have a presentation I'd love to share. And um, I want to kick off with some numbers. In the past, when I've done presentations, I like to throw out a number. I'm going to throw out 85,044. And for the, those who could take a guess, I just ran a search on Indeed.com, 25 miles from San Jose, how many jobs there are out there. And from the last seven days, I ran 15,435 job postings on Indeed. I narrowed it down to the accounting field for the word accountant in 25 miles, 1,488. What that says is that there are companies hiring, and I know that everyone is continuously, um, you know, trying to make sure you have the right skill sets in the market uh, so that you can land, you know, the dream job that you are seeking. Uh, so we're here to be a partner, to be a resource and help you. And I'm gonna go ahead and kick off the presentation. All right, uh, we're going to discuss your the candidate experience into, you know, working with a recruiting firm like Robert Half. Uh, just a quick story. I started in 2004. I actually started as a temporary employee within Robert Half. My for those of us who have uh, searched back then on Craigslist, my resume was on Craigslist and a recruiter from the administrative uh, division office team at the time um, was able to call me and hired me as a temporary employee to help catch up uh, our branch with data entry. And I've been able to, you know, stay with Robert Half for 18 years. It's been a really great journey. And I think I've learned over the years how that there are transferable skills out there for all of us and to be flexible in any type of job market. 
just a little bit about um, today, we are going to be learning more about Robert Half. I'd love to share more about us, uh, working with the recruiter, an employment snapshot, and discussing, of course, in-demand position and skills. So who is Robert Half? We are the world's first and largest specialized talent solutions firm. We have more than 300 locations worldwide, and we match candidates. We've been matching candidates with uh, companies you know, internationally across the US for over, these, over 70 years. Our specializations include accounting and finance, creative and marketing, technology, legal, and administrative, which also covers uh, customer service and HR. Uh, discussing with Rhonda, I know that there's a variety of, um, you know, participants here with a diverse background. Um, creative and marketing and technology was not able to join today, but happy to introduce you to the correct contact um, if that is in your uh, spe specialization. Just to share a few of our accolades, we're really proud of some of the accomplishments we've been able to achieve as an organization um, from the Fortune, uh, the world's most admired companies in 2022 to Forbes, America's best professional recruiting firms. Uh, so it's really been really exciting to see all these accolades come in. So we really are excited to, to help partner with you. All right, we're going to kind of move into working with a recruiter. Uh, for those who have not worked with the recruiter, you know, there's probably lots of questions of why should I work with the recruiter? What are the next steps if I apply to a job? So we'll, we'll hopefully cover all of that from the presentation along with your Q&A session. So why working with a recruiter? may be beneficial for you. Uh, one, we have a large job database. Uh, not only have we seen a change and shift in the job market from a local hiring perspective, but we now have access to a remote workforce. It's been really exciting to see how things have evolved uh, since 2020 and being able to help our candidates land remote jobs. In fact, we've been able to ship uh, tens of thousands of laptops uh, to candidates across the country. I just placed someone from Massachusetts and I had another candidate from Florida and vice versa. We've had candidates work for another state that was based here in the San, um, San Francisco Bay Area. So it's been really exciting. Uh, you can see a variety of work arrangements. Some of it is advertised and some of it um, you know, we've been able to fill pretty quickly just from a matrix of candidates. So you may not see some of the jobs that we are filling uh, because we're moving so quickly with fulfillment and talking to clients and employers every day on the phone. Um, there are uh, benefits from uh, growth opportunities with your placement, being able to learn new software skills. Uh, we also uh, have, you will have access to healthcare, dental, vision benefits through us. Uh, we do offer, uh, you know, accrual hours towards holiday pay. Uh, so lots of great things, including a tuition reimbursement and free online training. So it's been really exciting to share that with all of the candidates. And of course, there are no costs to you to work with Robert Half uh, to to get place. All right, I'm going to have Samir kind of move through uh, what it's like to work with the recruiter. And um, the next couple of slides will be uh, focused on that. Yeah, thanks, Neville. So, you know, working for with a recruiter um, for us, you know, it's the biggest thing is transparency, flexibility, um, and honest honestly uh for us you know our goal is you know, to to get you either on the path of your career goal or to help you continue your career so to best uh put us in a uh, position to help you um you know, in an efficient and ideal manner it's it's more so knowing what you want so we can uh you know meet that criteria when we're meeting with our clients and and having these opportunities for you so for us you know, in terms of what we do, you know, we we want to know what you're looking for. Are you in a situation where you're in in school and, and looking for part time work? Are you just looking for, uh, you know, summer work or, you know, things like that? So we offer three main types of employment. We offer contract opportunities. Uh, we offer uh, contract to hire or temporary to hire positions, as well as direct hire uh, opportunities. Um, each is really case by case. You tell us what you want us to look for, and we'll present you with those opportunities. Um, you know, obviously, the sooner the better, things like that. Um, other things that we'd like to know, um, because we are huge, you know, we've been around, like Neville said, for over 70 years, we've worked with um, all types of uh, employers, uh, you know, the big companies, the small startups, uh, you know, things like that. And so we want to know what kind of environment, you know, 
are you looking to work in? Are you somebody that thrives in, in one of these bigger environments or want to work for a big name company? Or are you somebody who wants to wear many hats and, you know, working in a smaller office um, can help, you know, obviously, you know, build up your skill set and, and provide you with opportunities to do more than one thing um, in that aspect. Obviously, you know, probably the most important thing is, um, you know, compensation. Uh, when we are looking for jobs, first thing that we want to do is meet with you, find out what you're looking for, find a criteria that you want us to search under, and then we reach out and talk to you about those opportunities that match that criteria. So for us, it's, um, you know, the more information you have for us, the more clear, uh, you know, I, criteria you want us to identify, the better we will be at our job in terms of finding you opportunities um, and going from there. So we're here to help, you know, whether it's on a uh, just short term, you know, uh, you know, basis or for something, you know, long term in your career, uh, we can help in pretty much any way you can think of um, in terms of your job search. So the biggest thing, you know, for us is, you know, using, you know, and signing up you know, reach out, go to our website, submit a resume, create your uh, profile, um, and our recruiters will reach out to you, set up a meeting with you to kind of go over the process, get it, again, discuss that criteria, um, and going from there. So yeah, so essentially, you know, this is, you know, uh, simplified is search our jobs, apply, you know, submit your resume, uh, recruiters will reach out to you, um, about the position, um, meet with you again, going from there, and then we'll help facilitate. We'll work with you to edit your resume, uh, give you tips on the, the clients, the people that you're going to be meeting with, you know, uh, for the interview process. Um, and then, you know, we'll handle everything from there. You know, we'll, we'll get pay squared away, making sure that we're presenting you and getting you as much money as possible and that it's fitting within your availability and going from there. Ultimately, our goal is to get you a job. Um, and so we'll help facilitate that process as much as possible um, and, go, you know, kind of go from there. Great. I do want to, you know, also add that, you know, the mobile app is also available. The Robert Half mobile app is available for you to quickly create a profile uh, apply to positions. And if you do land a project with us, and as you come close to the end date, you know, there are going to be job recommendations based on the skills that you were able to acquire from the job along with your past work history. So Robert Half has been really exciting. Uh, it's been exciting to see Robert Half evolve our technology platform uh, to make it easier for the recruiting team to, to really um, focus on the candidate experience. So please do uh, consider, you know, downloading the app and, and seeing the jobs that we have available. Uh, thanks, Samir, for mentioning all of that. All right, let me move to the next screen here. Just a real quick employment snapshot. These are national numbers. Uh, the unemployment rate as of March was 3.6%. Um, we are seeing openings from 11.5 million uh, with a quit level of 4.5 million. So this is all from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And at the end of the day, you know, companies are still very much hiring. And um, what I wanted to share, you know, some employer data that we were able to compile from our research, 51% of leaders will add new permanent jobs. 48% plan to recruit for vacated positions. 48% will offer signing bonuses to new employees. And from a candidate's uh, viewpoint, you know, we're always interested in what the employee is, is wanting, and 33% currently want to pursue a more meaningful or fulfilling position. And this was a survey conducted with 573 US workers um, who said that they've had career reconsiderations due to COVID-19 pandemic. So lots of movement uh, in the employee workforce, and Robert Half is here to help, um, you know, helps companies with supplying candidates to their openings and helping candidates find the right opportunity. And the hybrid environment is here, you know, just speaking with Robert Half, about Robert Half, you know, we went remote uh, March of 2020. I remember it very, <laughs> like it was yesterday. And, you know, now just like all companies who we're speaking with, uh, the evolution of the conversation of what a hybrid model will look like is here. And one in three employees are currently splitting their time between home and office. So we'll see how, you know, the job market continues to evolve. As far as what managers are expecting from their hires, 71% of managers will require employees to work on site full time. 
while 16% will allow employees to work remotely part of the time. And we're gonna move into soft skills. Uh, soft skills have been evolved definitely through the pandemic as we moved into communicating in a different type of way from video chats to video conferencing to um, just a 100% virtual world, uh, chat rooms. And so communication is key, being able to learn how to work with Microsoft Teams, how to use Zoom, how to use Slack. So there's just different types of communication skills that are now more crucial and important. Being able to work with employers that may be in a different time zone, um, being able to communicate effectively in your presentations where you can't do it in person anymore. It's, it's all virtual and being able to train employees too. I'm doing that right now with some new hires and it's been a new skill set for myself as well. And adaptability, you know, a flexible mindset of, you know, companies going through changes and the employees should also consider how to be adaptable as companies evolve with, um, you know, new criteria to work on site and what the remote workforce might look like. So soft skills needed for hybrid teams. I just kind of wanted to share some of the highlights that we were um, able to identify, you know, ability to work independently, um, not being surrounded by, you know, your coworkers and your managers 100% of the time. So just lots of really great um, tips here. Um, and I know that Rhonda, you mentioned you'll be able to supply the information to your participants later. So I uh, just want to share that. What managers are looking for, strategic and critical thinking, 38%. Planning and organization, organizational skills, 34%. And then communication, 33%. Creativity, 30, 30%, and adaptability, 26%. And I think creativity to me really stood out because, you know, we are learning new processes and companies are looking for efficient ways to, to get the job done um, in a different type of work environment. So I think that's um, anyone who could come up with different ideas and I'm getting new ideas from my employees all the time. All right, we're gonna move into some of the hot jobs um, in our specialization. So these are the hot jobs in finance and accounting that we are currently seeing across the country and is very much relevant to the local Bay Area. Accounts payable, accounts receivable specialists, bookkeepers, controllers, financial analysts, payroll specialists, project managers, senior accountants, staff accountants, and tax accountants. And as you could see that there are different um, industries that have also been very um, huge in this type in this current market. All right, and next we have the skills that are we are seeing um, in accounting and finance cloud based systems, uh, CPA, CRM software, data analysis, ERP systems, Excel, industry quick in industry experience and QuickBooks. Um, and then some of the soft skills that we spoke about earlier. And these are for the technology positions. So for those of you in the technology field, some of the positions here, cloud engineers, front end developers, software developers. And here are some of the in-demand skills and certifications. And again, I, this is not my expertise of recruiting. We do have a, a really great Robert Half technology team that could help you um, identify the right project. So please reach out to us and we'll get you to the right contact. And here we have for marketing and creative. Content strategists, copywriters, graphic designers, UX designers, and their in-demand skills. Adobe Creative Cloud, copywriting, digital marketing, marketing, email campaign management, project management, social media. All right, and Tony, I, you're gonna take over this screen here. Absolutely, yes, thanks Neville. Um, so these are the hottest administrative and customer support positions that are in the area that are in demand. Uh, we have administrative assistants, we have call centers and customer service specialists. We have data entry specialists, executive assistants, facilities managers and uh, front desk coordinators and receptionists, uh, mortgage assistants and office assistants. And we these positions are in demand for several of our industries that we work with, including e-commerce, education, 
even financial services, government, healthcare, and nonprofits. Um, and basically, this these roles are always going to be in demand with every one of our different types of industries. Uh, we are going to be recruiting for these on a nonstop basis. And the top credentials and proficiencies for the administrative roles that are in demand are typically bachelor's degrees are required, um, a good sense of business acumen, data, database management and cloud-based software, um, expense management software, Microsoft Office is a huge tool that we need, especially in Excel, uh, Google Workspace, so Google Suite and uh, social media management. On the customer side, we typically need uh, various people with good soft skills and good customer service acumen. Sorry, Tony, my screen's not moving okay. for some reason. I apologize. Okay. Let me um, try it again. Okay, yeah. So uh, a lot of the positions that do require um, the soft skill aspect for customer support is bilingualism. There is a lot of clients that do have a large Spanish clientele, Spanish speaking clientele. And then there's uh, business acumen, of course, uh, front facing call centers and customer service, communication skills, they need good email, oral and written communication, always, always imperative. Uh, customer loyalty, data entry, empathy, and Salesforce has been a very, um, a, a very hot commodity now with our clients. So, or CRM experience, um, and those are the typical um, requirements of those positions. Yeah, I just want to add for the expense management software. I think we, we we've seen a lot of concur, Expensify, uh, those those types of uh, expense management software to help out. All right, and Samir will discuss our legal positions. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so yeah, so for us, um, you know, these are mostly in demand um, nationwide, uh, not just locally. Um, compliance, contracts managers, in-house counsels, uh, law firm associates, and then you know, on the support level, the legal assistant and paralegal positions. And this is across industries: technology, healthcare. Um, you know. Uh, biotech um anything you can think of all of all of these firms all of these companies have one of these needs or more uh to be honest um in that aspect and and so these are we're always hiring for people with this background or even just an interest into getting uh into the this this area of law uh because again it's it's in demand it's it's a hot market um and so you know we are you know taking on people that or even our entry level or have minimal experience for these types of positions. And yeah, so in terms of the expertise, again, you know, commercial law, intellectual property, labor and employment, litigation, mergers and acquisitions, real estate, again, regulatory and compliance and trust and estate law, all of this, uh, you can almost, you know, they're hand in hand in terms of how they work. Uh, obviously, you know, speaking, let's say for the Silicon Valley, uh, you know, we work with a lot of these tech companies. And as, as you can see in the news that they're always making deals, there's always uh, negotiations, contracts that are being done, and that all fa falls under commercial law. And a lot of the times when that is happening, intellectual property rights will fall under that as well. So all of these will fall, you know, in so if you specialize in one or more of these areas, uh, especially here in Silicon Valley, you're, you're going to have a, a long career um, in that aspect. But again, this is uh, not just locally, but this is also you know nationwide um, as well in terms of what we're seeing um, across uh, you know the legal field. Great. Um. And of course, my screen again is stuck. So let me try it one more time. There it goes. Uh, we do have some data on the healthcare side as well. So medical customer service, the medical front office and reception, medical scheduling, patient access, patient registration, and revenue cycle personnel. Um, definitely have we've seen a lot of healthcare positions come in, especially during you know the pandemic. And they're looking for the skills, coding and billing. CRM-based coding, data analysis, the EMR software, 
project management and soft skills. Just to give an example, I have a, a current employer that just hired two candidates because they decided to move all their electronic medical records into an EMR software. And uh, it's going to take about four months to get that project finished. So it's been great to place two candidates into that project. Uh, for HR, HR assistants, HR coordinators, HR directors, generalists, managers, and recruiters. So these are the hot in demand jobs for HR. And we're looking for the CCP, your CEBS, CHRL, GPHR, HRIS, ADP, UKJ, and Workday. So lots of different um, uh, skill sets that you could acquire within that field. And we do have a specialized team in the Bay Area that is focused on HR placements. Oh, there's also the PHR, your SHRM, um, and SPHR. All right. Well, I Rhonda, you know, did want us to share our salary guide. So our salary guide is a live interactive tool on our website, and I, I'd love to do a quick demo for all of you. You could access some data there. Um, how did we compile this data? There are a lot of different avenues. We're placing candidates throughout the United States, collecting that data. We're working with the local branches and markets to obtain the, the salary information as well. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing this PowerPoint, but would love to share uh, what that uh, tool looks like as you use it online. So let me just share my screen here. All right, I'm currently on roberthalf.com. So you could scroll down and you'll see a 2022 salary guide section. And you could click on that. And if you want to have access to the salary guide, you can plug in your information here, first name, last name, email. You could click how much do you want to earn or how much should I pay as an employer? And if you submit, you will have access to the site and I'll gladly share that site as well. And if you wanted to do a quick look here, you can actually find a job title and a dedicated location. So I'm just gonna use accountant as an example and it's going to populate you know, a variety of titles and you wanna choose the one that best works for you. So let's say that I would like to look up, let's see here, a senior, a staff accountant, one to three years, general accounting. And as you free form here on location, just a heads up in the Bay Area, it looks like we could only do San Francisco or San Jose, not San Mateo is currently um, there. So we'll get a, a different a variety of options here. So San Jose, Oakland, San Francisco are gonna be the nearest ones for this. Um, demonstration, I'll do San Jose. And here you'll see a low, a high, and a midpoint for the San Jose market. So a really good tool to identify as you discuss, you know, how much you should get paid or how much you should be searching for in your next opportunity. As you do get access to the salary guide, this is a quick view of what it looks like you can access some data from a national trends perspective. You could click on specializations and find your area of what you're looking for. We also added some really great tools for the employers regarding perks and benefits, the remote workforce, um, and the diversity, equity, and inclusion section. So lots of really, really great survey information and research there. Uh, for this, I'm gonna go back into finance and accounting as our demo. What's really great about this tool is you can actually take a look across the US to see what the variance is to adjust the salary by cost of living. So for, again, I'm gonna use the San Jose example. And what's really great is that you could see that it, if you live in the San Jose, it's about 41% higher than the national average. So let's just choose another area just to see, let's try Atlanta. And Atlanta is 7.5% higher than the national average. So a really great tool if you're considering relocating, um, maybe a remote, a remote job in a different state, some really great tools here. And as you scroll down, you'll see all the options within accounting and finance. 
and I am going to choose accounting operations for this demo. And as you could see here, it'll break down the percentiles from more entry level to mid level to high level skill sets. So your AP specialist, again, these would be the salary recommendations and you would go to, this is the Atlanta. So if I wanted to change it to San Jose, let me change that. There you go. So the, the change of salaries also adjusted. So really great tool, please access it. I think it's really great. And prior to this, we, were phys we, were, we had physical copies of the salary guide and our team worked really hard to put this online and it's been a really great tool for our employers and candidates. So just want to highlight the administrative uh, page as well. I'm gonna show the legal and please reach out to Tony or Samir if you have questions on their specializations. Um, I do wanna also acknowledge that if you keep scrolling down, there are some of the hiring trends in legal and you'll see that on each specialization. Um, I'll go ahead and share technology and marketing creative just so that you could also see what's available here. So down here, you'll see all the options. And for marketing and creative, And here are your options. So they even handle PR, which is great. All right, well, I wanted to uh, share that. And Rhonda, that is our presentation. So I think we are safe to move into the Q&A. Okay, well, Neville, let's go ahead and uh, stay on that concept of salary. One of the questions that came in was with regards to, is there a deeper detail for the salary guide? For example, if your title is not listed as an option, so for example, senior partner, manager, or director of strategic partnerships, for example, how would you be able to drill down to get that comparative analysis? That's a really great question because we, you know, we obviously have our specializations and may not cover all types of positions. I would say that my advice there would be to connect with a recruiter that could direct you to someone at Robert Half. We do offer a variety of uh, placements throughout Robert Half that we will have someone who maybe have met a candidate similar with your background or knows someone who typically would hire that. So that would be my recommendation if you don't necessarily see your title or the specific skill set. Um, we are thousands and thousands here at Robert Half. One of us will know the answer for you. So we'll, we'll definitely reach out. Please reach out to us and we'll get you the right contact. Samir and Tony, please feel free to jump in if you have a different thought as well. No, I completely agree. Uh, it's all dependent on specialization. So for, you know, legal, obviously, there's hundreds of different titles you can have in the legal field, not everything's going to be listed from our research. But, you know, with recruiters, for example, you know, I've met with thousands of applicants um, and people um, in my career. And, and so we can get you something that's similar, um, you know, because they're even in situations with the law firm, a title in a law firm can be different as working for a tech company in their legal department. It could be the same job, but the title is going to be different. Yeah, and as far as the administrative side, uh, you know, we get very specific job titles that come through, and really, it just comes down to drilling down on your skill sets, where we compare and contrast to the different functional roles that we recruit for, and that's how we make an assessment to the level of your of your career path. Okay, so the um, next question that, that we have is in regards to entry level. And there's two sides to this question, actually. There's, first of all, if someone is looking for um, in, entry level positions within Robert Half, how, are, how might they go about exploring that kind of an opportunity? Absolutely. I, I would say that if you are talking to a recruiter, mention that you are interested in joining Robert Half, we do have an amazing administrative and operations support team. Um, and we are hiring. So we'd love to connect. And, uh, you know, we do have corporate recruiters, just like any company, we have our field of, you know, recruiters and sales professionals, but we also have a corporate office in San Ramon, and they're recruiting for our internal roles. So 
payroll, customer service, all, you know, we have all of that, just like any other employer. So please feel, reach out to us and we'll, we'll get your resume floating around to the right contact. We also advertise our internal positions. So you're more than welcome to apply to those as well. Great. Another question with regards to entry levels. So if someone is pursuing entry level positions, are those reflected on your website? Will there be, um, how would someone go about determining an entry level position, whether it's an admin or customer service or any other specialties that you um, provide? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Tony. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so what we do is um, we basically will rate in the job description. It'll it'll require have the different requirements of the skill set. We'll usually have an experience requirement as well. Um, and you know, based on the candidate's resume, we we will kind of after we do our screening process and our interviewing, we can kind of assess if that would be the right fit, or if not, we would recommend them to a different position that we might have. And in, in regards to legal, a lot of times people, you know, assume that you need either a paralegal certificate or go to law school to, to work in the legal field, which is not the case. A lot of uh, these legal companies hire uh, folks with just a, a college degree. Um, and, and like Tony said, we will clarify in our job descriptions, whether it's an entry level position or not. Um, but also we, we recommend just getting in touch with recruiters, regardless of what you see online in terms of our job postings, because we do like to try to do tailored searches as well for each individual that we meet with. Uh, so if we might not have a entry level position available right at that moment, we'll begin reaching out, uh, you know, essentially on your behalf to try to find an entry level role as well. I also wanted to chime in and say that, um, you know, I've met many, many entry level candidates who just had the business acumen, the excellent communication skills, just needed a chance. And that's where, you know, we could come in and, and we're speaking to these employers and making recommendations. We also conduct assessments, right? So if you scored 100% on our Excel assessment, that is huge. And we will take your background to our clients and ask if anyone would be willing to you know, hire this entry-level candidate. Uh, and because you were able to showcase some very great skills uh, within Excel, some employers, I have had employers actually hire those candidates who have not had experience because of that and on top of the communication skills. So definitely there's different avenues to pursue. Great. Another question is in regards to Earlier, you talked about um, going online and putting a resume a profile, in essence, to your system. Uh, can you just clarify how you would provide your goals and needs um, prior to being assigned a, a recruiter in your company? Yeah, yeah. So when you do uh, interact with Robert Half or any of our job boards, um, it will ask you to create a profile. So it's beyond also um, the resume upload because the, there will be some, some questions for you to help um, create a profile with Robert Half. And so we can see, you know, certain things from desired location and your skill sets. And so that, but then, you know, we take it the extra step of having that phone conversation with you to really hone in on what you're looking for. But if you could just, you know, create a profile with us, you'll see the, the how easy it is to create a profile so that we could access your, your information pretty quickly. So if someone were targeting like the LA area or other areas outside the Bay Area, um, how would Robert have get connected um, with a candidate locally? So uh, there's, there's multiple ways. Um, if you're applying to a job in the LA area, uh, regardless where you're located, that your information will be sent to that, uh, to that office locally. Um, and then obviously you can reach out to to us or, or somebody here in the Bay Area, um, and we can you know share your information with our recruiters in, in whether it's LA, Atlanta, Texas. Uh, we've done a really good job of building relationships with our recruiters um, all across the country. Uh, so I you know I I know our recruiters on the East Coast, you know Chicago obviously here on the west coast as well so um it's it's just you know putting honestly i would say you know getting your information out there to us through our app through our website applying to jobs um and and we and then just connecting with us and then we'll we'll facilitate um any any communication that needs to happen whether it's again if you're looking for jobs bay area based or 
LA based or wherever we can get you in touch with the right people. Yeah. I also want to say that, again, Robert Half has uh, evolved our technology and it's so great and easy, so much easier for us as recruiting professionals to identify who's been applying to narrowing it down from a skills, skill set perspective. It's very much like a Google search capability, like what clients are looking for, we can identify through the applicant pool or those who have currently, you know, have interviewed with us. I, we could also see how far your commute could be. Um, really great tools that we've been able to enhance. So uh, just up, keep applying um, and it, it, your profile should be very visible now to all the recruiters. Great. Do you happen to come across a lot of non-tech roles uh, in technology companies? So if, for instance, um, sales, sales enablement and marketing, You know, I would probably introduce that individual to our marketing and creative group that could most likely help that individual out uh, with their search. I have, I remember a client looking for sales enablement in the past and they were able to connect with that employer. Um, sales, I, I would say is probably a little tough for us to work with our employers, you know, sales you know, every, I think a lot of companies are looking for sales professionals. It is a hard skill set to fill, but if anyone's interested in sales and wanting to do sales for over half, we're always looking for great salespeople. So <laughs> please reach out to us and we'll, we'll get you connected. Yeah. I mean, again, just to kind of touch on it, you know, I do legal opportunities, but I would say most of my clients are these technology companies. So we're really kind of, we don't focus necessarily just on, industry it's more so department within that company regardless of what type of company it is so neville might you know do accounting and finance for a tech company not just a cpa firm uh, for example so it just really depends on what department what type of you know what we call a functional role you want to do um and and then we can go and then you know part of the process and meeting with robert half is finding out what industry you want to work in. If you want to work in the technology industry, but not you're not an engineer, you know, again, whether it's through accounting or legal, then those recruiters you'll you'll be connected with. Going back to the conversation around um, hybrid and remote, um, Neville, you had mentioned in the presentation sharing some data points that um, in your recent survey with employers that um, if one in three employees are now hybrid, but employers want 72% on site. The question was, how do those two sets agree or disagree? Yeah, I, I would say I, I, these are again surveys between the employee and what they're wanting and the employer of what they're wanting. So I would say that I think it's an evolution of trying to make this work for everyone. And I think Samir and Tony could also you know, speak on this that we have some great candidates that do not wanna go into the office and we have employers that are requesting it. And then the, the employer finally adjusts. Um, and then we have candidates that refuse to go into an office and then finally adjust because an opportunity comes. I think it's, it's, it's continuing to evolve. It's a tricky question for me to answer, but I think it's, it's a lot of dialogue. I think clients are still conducting a lot of internal evaluation of what their work model will look like. Robert Half is no different. And we're also, you know, we are remote, but, you know, things may change, you know, um, as we move throughout the year. So I would say, you know, hopefully that helps answer that. But I would say that the it's the flexibility and adaptability piece, um, but really owning what you really want. You know, there are some candidates that are 100% remote and they're not willing to budge. And it could be because of their home life. You know, they have a family that they have to take care of or elderly that are at home and they don't feel safe you know, being out in the workforce right now. So I, I would say that it's a continued conversation based on my everyday conversations with candidates and companies. Yeah, again, it, it ties down to that criteria aspect of it. You tell us what you want us to look for, what you're comfortable with, and, and we'll you know, reach out um, to you as we meet with clients that are looking for the same, right? Um, obviously, you know, we're not gonna, if you're telling us you can only work remote, you know, we're not gonna be, you know, uh, approaching, you know, companies that are only looking to hire on site um, with you in mind. We're, we're targeting remote clients. So that way, I like to say, you know, when we do reach out to you and we do have an opportunity to talk to you about, we feel very confident in your um, ability and chances of getting the opportunity because we feel like it matches the criteria that you've out, uh, outlined to us 
Um, and so then it's just a matter of getting your information to the client and, and setting up that interview and, and, and going from there. And, it, and yeah, and even in the administrative field, it has been it has been a challenge because our types of positions that we recruit for are very customer front facing and very, you know, it ha provides that people um, interaction skill set that is needed. But based on the back end office positions that we've been filling, you know, certain EA roles and certain admin assistant positions that aren't necessarily needed to be in the office at all times, we do promote candidates that are looking for remote only or hybrid and just putting the information in our clients ears to understand this is what we're seeing in our market and by that we've started to see a slow movement of options with clients giving a giving candidates a remote option Can you speak to what's happening now in the um, job market, especially in uh, now that we are here in May, almost soon to be June. And um, so since March, there has been a lot of stock market economic turbulence and companies like Facebook, Lyft, Uber, Twitter have slowed or stopped hiring. Um, are you seeing um, any a slowdown with any of your employers that you are working with? Uh, go ahead, Sumer. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So with legal, obviously, it's a very specialized market. Um, so uh, for us, you know, I think unemployment in legal is under 1%. Uh, so it's very competitive in that aspect. Um, I do say it do, It does tend to kind of go in flows. But for us, we're, we're, we always have opportunities available with our clients. Um, that's there. There isn't you know, a week that goes by where we don't have opportunities. It's just a matter of, are these opportunities a fit for your background and, and vice versa? Um, but in terms of, yeah, the market, it, it, it is ever changing um, and it just depends on industry as well. But for legal, we are always hiring uh, specific skill sets. Like I could tell you, like if you have experience with contracts, if you have experience with litigation, uh, there's going to be opportunities for you. And speaking for finance and accounting, of course, everyone is still going to need accountants to help uh, manage their finances. Um, but being with Robert Half for so long and working through, you know, 2008 and nine, you know, with the real estate, um, you know, it developed new opportunities, you know, right after that, the change. And, you know, pandemic also, uh, a lot of people were impacted by the pandemic, but we also saw some new jobs come in from like COVID screeners, um, a change in customer service, a change in more IT positions because everyone went remote and there would, there needed to be some adjustments there. So it will be interesting to see how, you know, what we hear on the news impact the market, but I would say that we're still very much busy um, and clients are still hiring and we definitely are still looking for candidates. And on the administrative side, yeah, um, since a lot of offices have gone full on site now, um, we've been the furthest, you know, apart from the, the pandemic as ever before, we have been seeing a rise in need for receptionists, admins, office managers, and all those on-site positions that we had to see get let go in the past. And it's starting to get more and more busy with us in the administrative side. How much does it cost to work with you? And can you talk a little about that process? Zero dollars, it's free. <laughs> There's no cost to, to work with us. So uh, please, please apply and uh, we'll, we'll try to match you to the employer. Do you also help with part-time jobs, return to work kind of roles? Yes, yes, we do. Uh, Samir and Tony, if you want to chime in, but uh, all every client is different in what their needs are. And uh, we do have part time positions available today. Absolutely. Yeah, it can range from different um, positions, different hours and schedules, one to two days, or even five days, a few hours a day. It just depends. Yeah, same with legal. Uh, we get part-time. Uh, most of our clients do want somebody full-time, but we do get part-time. 
Um, obviously, with the pandemic, you know, we we've seen employment gaps. And and again, the great thing with us is, you know, we're working directly with the hiring, you know, people um, within these companies. You know, for me, I work with the, the attorneys that uh, that need the support and we can. Um, I like to kind of think of it as we're like a cover letter for you. We serve as that. We vouch for you to our clients directly uh, so we can explain situations um, in that aspect, whether it's an employment gap or your or, or limitations in your availability. Um, but pretty much everything part time, full time, uh, remote, hybrid, on site. Um, I can't speak for the other um, uh, it, you know, uh, industries that, you know, like for Neville or, or Tony, but for legal, the only thing I would say is we don't do internships. All of our jobs will be essentially a normal paying uh, type of position. So what about, um, can you talk a little more about the training, uh, Neville, that uh, Robert have provides in, turning, in terms of training and certifications as being a benefit uh, of uh, being uh, working with Robert have? Yeah, absolutely. Once you are um, interviewed with us and registered, we can sign you up with um, a program that you can, you know, receive access to. Uh, there's over 8,000 online uh, tutorials, videos, ebooks. So it's a really, really great tool to, to log into and access. A lot of our candidates have actually used it um, in the past to brush up on maybe so a software that they haven't used in a year and felt a little rusty. Um, but definitely we'd love to get you signed up for that once you, once you meet with us. Okay, going to HR, and um, have you started seeing uh, a demand in HR, HR analysts, business analysts, and design thinking? What are the certifications and years of experience needed for these? Yeah, I definitely would feel that we would want to refer this um, participant to HR services. Uh, Tony and uh, my team here, we would do anything from like HR admin, HR file clerks, but if you are looking for more generalists, HR managers, business partners. Um, from, my, from what I've seen from my current clients who I've introduced to HR services, there's been a lot of maybe DEI initiatives. Um, some of it's hybrid with payroll, um, you know, comp and analysts, those types of positions I've seen come in. But again, I would definitely would love to refer you to HR services because that's their expertise. And we've hired some really great HR professionals to join that team as well. We'll be providing for those for those who've been asking the question. We are going to be providing our panelists um, contact information for you to follow up accordingly. So uh, be in anticipation of getting that uh, updated as well. Um, would could you speak to uh, remote jobs such such as 100% remote versus 50% remote and the team support? How are people being supported with that process? Samir, Tony, did you want to take that one, or I, I could. I mean, yeah, so part is as part as far as the remote um, workforce, I mean, we are getting we are still getting remote positions that's been a little bit less frequently. But um, like we said in the past, um, I we do market our candidates that are looking for remote or hybrid roles to our clients, should the job allow it to proceed in that fashion. Yeah, and and for remote positions that we do get, yeah, and and as Tony uh, mentioned, they aren't as frequent, obviously, as they have been, even earlier this year and, and over these last couple of years. But um, most companies will lay out, um, you know, prior to uh, asking for resumes, is kind of what the the process is going to look like. What support they're going to be able to provide and things like that, whether it's equipment, uh, network access, things like that, um, and, and even Robert Half helps out and we can provide equipment as well. Um, I know we've provided laptops and and even second screens uh, to, to candidates as well to help them, you know, uh, be able to, to do the job successfully on a remote basis. Yeah. 
And then just to give some examples, you know, if, if uh, clients um, sometimes have asked if a candidate has access to their own equipment, then you would use a, a secured VPN that they would provide. Um, or if the client ships you a laptop, usually it's um, you get the offer. Um, I've seen it ship around um, in 24 to 48 hours and the candidate's ready to work. Um, as far as onboarding, they're typically logging on to a Zoom link or a Microsoft Teams link and full on training virtually and working with their employer just like this and talking and sharing your screen. Um, if it's a Robert Half laptop, you know, we'll ship it out to you as quickly as possible as well. And then we would connect you with our technology team. Um, and then most likely that employer will also work with you on their technology. So um, it is the norm. And I think that um, if you could get used to, you know, learning through a video conference, it'll be very beneficial for you. So the positions that are on the website, are, are those the only positions that you have? Do you have other positions that have not been reflected um, out there? So, uh, yeah, go um, yeah, for us in terms of legal, uh, there are situations where we do work with certain clients that want us to do confidential searches. And so we might not post, but that's why we try to meet with as many folks regardless, because we we will have confidential searches that aren't going to be made to the public that we can work on exclusively with with candidates uh, so that's why we want to meet with as many folks as possible because we could also have those opportunities uh, that are exclusive is i guess the best way to put it yeah and the, and the benefit of that is you know so we always encourage our candidates you know if you don't see a position you don't like still reach out to us because we do oftentimes we have anywhere from 10 to 15 jobs open at any given time and we can go through any one of those with our candidates to check in if they're interested based on their skill set, et cetera. So it's always good to check in with one of us for those open roles. Yeah. I also want to add, uh, Rhonda, that we do receive orders from clients that may have a gap in their front desk or reception desk. Uh, so they may need someone for one to two days. And if we have someone who's willing to do it next day, you know, that job may not get posted because it's already been filled. So we do we do run into that as well. So we're looking for general kinds of questions that can be reflected for all. So uh, we'll, we'll encourage for those of you who have special specific areas that you're targeting, we would encourage you to follow up uh, with our panelists um, to uh, get a referral to the specialty area of your choice. So another question that has come up is when you talk to companies um and robert half temp employees excuse me what are you finding out about COVID risk reduction practices as being followed and our companies supporting employees who choose um to mask just what are you seeing out there with the COVID, um you know shifting and and um and so forth i think it depends on the industry um we have been seeing a lot uh we still have a lot of our uh candidates um especially in maybe a public or government sector, they are still required to wear masks or even in the medical setting, especially because they're gonna be exposed to a lot of different people. Um, they are still required to be masked up. Um, vaccination policies have been put in place with some of the clients. Um, we just, we, what we do is we provide as much information to our candidates as possible and to kind of give them a better picture of the sense of what they're gonna get into. And some of the companies we were able to visit prior to the pandemic and some of the clients we we also have some long term relationships with some of our employers and you know we'll ask you know how's the layout of the office space will this kind of have their own office space, you know are they isolated. And I think those are natural questions that are coming up from both the candidate side and clients are more than happy to help make it um, accommodate to a candidates needs and make sure the candidate feels comfortable working there. Yeah, any t um, before we post any job, before we post or reach out to any candidates, we are 
um, always meeting with our clients first um, and finding the situation. So if it's a client that does require somebody on site, whether it's once a week or five times a week, we are asking these questions in terms of what are their COVID protocols and things like that. And, and for the most part, all clients are following uh, the regulations outlined by the state. Um, and, and so we will notify candidates of that, you know, whatever that process is. Uh, so the, the expectations are set before, you know, we're, we're submitting candidates to an open position. Can you talk a little bit more about the um, application process? So, for example, if um, a candidate goes ahead, puts up a profile on the roberthalf.com website, and they see a position um, that they are interested in, but then they realize that, oh, by the way, there are additional skills and experiences that would enhance my marketability for that role. Um, how do you go about helping the candidate make updates to their resume? And um, what role do you play in helping to prepare them if they are then um, um, offered for an interview? Talk a little more about how you prepare candidates for opportunities that they apply for or that they're interested in and talking with you a little more about what they may be targeting. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what we do is we get, we always get with our candidates. We spend a quality amount of time with them to go over their skill set, ensure we uncover every skill set that they have. So a lot of times I run into candidates that say, oh, I didn't add this position on the resume because it didn't seem relevant. You know, you always want to add that because you have, you don't know that what the client's looking for. It's always good to show, I can do this, but even though it may not be relevant, I can also do this. And who knows? It's also been told that you know by doing that, we showcase the client what their candidates are capable of. They'll even recognize, oh, I didn't realize that they went from here to here before, and they were able to perform both tasks. That's great. I might have a need for that. It, it could be a, a game changer for the candidate. So you always want to include, don't sell yourself short is basically what I'm trying to tell you. You know, always put 100% put of yourself out there. Yeah, and again, uh, we're because when we meet with our clients before we reach out to candidates for potential opportunities, uh, we're obviously going over the job descriptions, you know, the requirements, um, if there's any flexibility on certain aspects of it. And a lot of times we'll also, you know, just get honest feedback from our client and say, yeah, you know, I need this person to do A, B, and C that's on this job description but as long as honestly they can do b and we can train them on a and c and so when we're relaying that to our candidates there's going to be obviously some folks that are looking at a job description and might feel overwhelmed and we'll again because we have these conversations directly with the hiring manager we can you know rest be you know have them you know feel you know rest assured in the sense that you know we're we're calling you for a reason we we feel confident in your abilities um and, and go from there and we'll always work to tailor the resume um you know in that aspect we i always try to tell the candidates that if there's anything in that job description that you have done make sure it's in your resume um as tony said don't sell yourself short um really a lot of the times the feedback that we get is if it's not on the resume and it's on the job description they're either thinking you can't do it or you don't want to do that work anymore uh so either way it's not helping out your application um and then of course if a client decides to interview you we'll give you tips uh we'll provide information names of the people you're interviewing with we'll tell you to do research um if it's companies we've worked with before we'll kind of tell you what to expect what they're really going to ask you about um and things like that our like i said our goal is to get you a job and, and we're going to try to give you as much information um and help with your resume as as much as possible uh you know so you can win that job i would also say some candidates do like being able to interview with the recruiter first before meeting the employer, because it's kind of like practice, especially if you've been out of the job market for a long time and have not been interviewing, like the last interview you had was 10 years ago, you know, interviewing with us may make um, make you feel more comfortable. And, um, you know, we'll give you the feedback on the interview every time you go out. Uh, but and we're also happy to do conduct interviews, um, you know, test interviews so you could practice before you go out and meet with an actual employer. There's some concern with regards to how much is enough in terms of information, how much is too much. 
Um, would you recommend perhaps that um, folks maybe outreach to you initially and have um, some conversation before they upload their profile or what do you think would be the best way? Because people really want to make sure that they're not missing out on opportunities, but they don't want to overwhelm the process and so forth. Um, so can you provide a little bit of guidance around what the recommendation would be uh, with regards to people looking to make sure that they are getting enough information so that they're not excluding themselves from opportunities but also that they're providing enough information that, that um, the window it, you know, expands for them. Absolutely. So, um, so what we do is, I mean, we, even our contractors that we come across, um, oftentimes our resumes can be five pages long and obviously we wanna shorten that, but we also wanna make sure that, in, that their skill sets are all displayed you know, within a, um, I like to have my candidates do a functional resume um, so yeah, there's chrono chron chronological jobs that are listed on the resume, but it more showcases their skill set rather than the tenure and the time between their jobs. So we often say, like we said before, always list every single one of your skills. Doesn't matter what it is, we can always go through it. We go through it together. Say so this is going to be. It's always good to have all of your relevant skill sets, even if you think it's not relevant included in there, we can always fix it later before it gets sent out to the client. Then we can educate the client candidates on, this is what you're gonna want to highlight because it should match a job description that you are a good fit for. Yeah, the resume that you are sending to us more times than not is not going to be the resume we're sending to clients. Um, because again, we're, we're working with you with each and every job to, to tailor that resume for that job. Right. So even if, you know, you send us a four page resume, you know, for one specific job, it might only need to be two. And we'll, again, take out things that are not relevant or not necessary to that job um, in that aspect. So, uh, yeah, when you're, again, sending resumes to us, um, you know, whatever it is, two pages, four pages, we'll work with you as part of that recruiting process to fix that resume. And then obviously with uh, when we talk to you about opportunities that we have available, we'll fix that resume then and there as well. And again, uh, realizing that um, NovaWorks provides uh, resume assistance. So we highly encourage you to uh, make an appointment with a career advisor to go over your background and experience and what you may be looking to target before you may be outreach to Robert Half. Um, as we here at Nova, we really discourage four page resumes um, just because we wanna make sure that people are not looking to present a four page resume to various employers. And so um, we have that as a resource for you to be able to work one on one to personalize your situation depending upon what you may be targeting uh, as it relates to the function or whether it relates to a particular industry. Uh, we can help you navigate that uh, so that you feel like you are capturing uh, your skills and experiences and your best you. So we want to kind of go back to the question of we, we heard that the cost, there's no cost to candidates, but can you talk a little bit about, well, how are you paid then if uh, the job seeker is not um, uh, paying you? How do you get paid? Can you talk a little more about that? Sure. Um, you know, our the employers that are choosing to work with Robert Half are actually, you know, we're providing a service and that's where our, our billing would come in uh, to help supply the right candidate for the employer. Please feel free to continue adding your questions in the um, chat there. That'd be great. Um, Take a look at some more questions that are coming in. So if someone were looking to transition um, into another field without experience, do you have any recommendations or advice for them? Yeah, again, it, it's, it comes down to how to present your resume. Um, there's going to be certain, you know, clients, you know, uh, you know, I get this question a lot and I see a lot of candidates that are coming from one, one industry and want to get into the legal field. Um, 
So it just comes down to how we present your transferable skills. Again, a lot of people don't realize that work that you've done in another industry, whether it's customer service, accounting and finance, you know, honestly, it doesn't matter. There's things that you're doing there that uh, can help transfer into the legal field. And so again, it comes down to showcasing and highlighting that aspect on your resume. Um, and, and again, uh, when we're meeting with our clients, um, you know, we're vouching for you and telling them why your skill set, you know, belongs with them um, in that aspect. Yeah, and to touch on that, um, on what Samir said, oftentimes the candidates that I recruit or even my team recruits, uh, they are, a lot of them are recent grads that are looking to get into a very specific field like technology or marketing or even legal, like Samir said, but they don't have the experience. Oftentimes, you know, we will place them, you know, in administrative role in my specialized field and to kind of get them a little bit of experience and we try to get it maybe into like a similar industry but if they showcase like what Sumer said if they showcase their skills in a certain way and to back it up if we have a good testimonial from our clients that robert have we can also showcase that to our other clients within our other practice groups yeah i think from a coaching perspective with my candidates i always you know ask them what are they applying to online and to see that job description scroll all the way down to the requirements, because um, the client wrote those requirements, and is that reflective on your resume, why or why not? And then what, if it's not, how can your transferable skills match what they're looking for? So if you're missing a software, you're missing the years of experience, where else can you add value to this employer? So just um, a tip that I've, I've done throughout my career for candidates. How does a job seeker's um, personal uh, social media presence impact their job search? Can you talk a little bit more about um, like LinkedIn? Do you take a look at that? And um, any comments that you want to share on social media, um, a candidate's, what candidate might have out there? For legal, it, it is still a very big factor, your social media presence. Um, LinkedIn, um, I, I always highly encourage, make sure uh, your social media profiles, um, at least your pictures are very professional um, in that aspect, especially with LinkedIn. Although, you know, we're not necessarily presenting uh, candidates LinkedIn profiles to our clients. Some may ask, um, but honestly, some may just search um, after the fact as well. Uh, so we always uh, try to, you know, uh, ensure or ensure that your your profiles are as professional as can be. Um, at least for the legal field, it's 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 um, it's a big factor, I think, still um, in that aspect. So uh, they want to make sure that they're hiring somebody who is is professional um, and will represent uh, that that company or that law firm in in, in a positive light. I also think there's an opportunity for relatability. I've seen, you know, clients uh, want to meet a candidate because they went to the same college, or maybe they worked for a company that they were affiliated with years past. Um, so all of that is accessible online. And so if the, you know, as long as you keep it professional, as Samir mentioned, um, that is very important. So in terms of the types of um, relationships that you um, have with candidates, um, are they just W-2 or are there other types of um, statuses that you're able to work with candidates around? For those of us on this video, we were placing W-2 employees, but we do have a consulting group um, that could work with you know, your 1099 employees. And I'd be happy to introduce you. That's your, if that's what you're looking for, to the correct contact. And again, NobleWorks provides LinkedIn <laughs> uh, support and, uh, and customization. So you can uh, attend the various offerings, the workshops, or you can work one on one with a career advisor um, in an appointment.
It's a good question in terms of, you know, what is your biggest challenge in filling the various positions? Uh, so for, in terms of legal, um, it's, it, it's honestly just such a competitive market. Um, silver lining, um, but also what kind of, again, makes it also competitive is the remote aspect of it. Um, you know, the biggest challenge that we see on legal is, you know, you're not just competing with people locally now, you're competing with people nationwide. Um, and, and sorry to say, but, you know, obviously we live in one of the most expensive markets. Uh, so, you know, some clients might, you know, are, are honestly looking at folks in Texas or in the Midwest um, that might have a similar skill set, but it's probably, you know, the cost will be less, you know, the salaries aren't going to be as high as somebody who's living in the Bay Area. But, you know, I understand that situation. We're, we're still very successful, uh, but that would probably be the biggest challenge is how competitive it is uh, for the available jobs, because you're not, I mean, with the remote aspect, not as, 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 as common as it used to be. Um, but if it's on site, you know, it's the, the biggest challenge is, you know, uh, the commute still. Uh, but if it's remote, uh, it's, it's the, the competitive aspect of, you know, you're competing with the entire country, really. So we, 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 we heard earlier about um, the opportunities that are out there. And so just, you may not be able to give a specifics, but just your general impression around what you're seeing in terms of contract work versus uh, full-time regular permanent work, um, any, any shifting that you're seeing that in terms of your uh, portfolio of offering uh, off, um, off, um, uh, requisitions that you're getting from employers? Do you have a sense of what's happening with that dynamic? Yeah, so, I mean, we've noticed that even some of my clients um, that previously we would Form uh, prior to the, even the pandemic, we would introduce a different division, um, our permanent services team, that they would be looking for a strictly permanent job. Now, a lot of our clients have been a little bit more receptive and um, be able to seek for more contract positions because uh, it, it has been harder to fill the position. So especially if they are looking for a permanent position, they often go to us and they uh, for the contract side and look for um, an immediate solution in the meantime while they're prime searching. Yeah, and in, in regards to legal, um, again, it depends if it, if it's a long term need, you know, open seat, some you know things like that. Um, it's it, it does again tend to be you know they look more of that on the permanent side to hire somebody permanently, um, but. There are also, you know, there's a lot of clients um, when they're, they're working on transactions. Um, a lot of that also tends to be quarter to quarter basis, uh, right? In terms of their budget and their financing and, and things like that. So they tend to do contract um, in that aspect. And then you reevaluate at, at the end of each quarter, you know, where their budget is, can they keep the person on? Uh, is there the work there and going from there? Uh, it's not the best answer. It's, you know, it's not a clear 50-50 or 75-25. It honestly does fluctuate week by week, month, month to month and, and things like that. Yeah, I would say that both PERM and contract services are very busy right now. And I think that on the contract side, projects are still happening, systems implementations, maternity leaves, medical leaves, um, resignations and, you know, the interim solution while they're refilling the position, all of that is still very relevant um, on the contract side. What advice do you have for those who may be returning to work and yet they might have some skill gaps um, in their work history? I would say contract work is is a great opportunity um, in that aspect. More clients are a little bit more flexible with somebody who, if they have a contract need, uh, so you know, a gap isn't as uh, big of a hindrance as you know for direct hire, you know, permanent role. Um, and the contract work is great. It, you know, it's something to fill in that gap, get you that recent exposure and experience, and it doesn't necessarily have to be that long term job, but it will help you get 
that long-term job. So that's where I honestly say contract work can really be beneficial to your resume is um, it's, it's usually quick, gets you, gets you something recent on your resume um, that adds to your skill set or, or uh, refreshes your skill set, um, which will then obviously help out for that long-term job opportunity. I would also say flexibility. You know, um, you may not get the perfect match maybe on your first placement. I Just to share an example, I had uh, more of an executive assistant candidate help out at a reception desk. Um, definitely not her skill set in the past, but the client met her, you know, really enjoyed having her there and asked what her background was because it seemed like she could do more than a front desk. And after seeing the resume, she ended up getting hired <laughs> by the company. And so that was just one of the many successful stories that I've had over the years. It's really great to see. So I think the candidates that are flexible, you know, willing to see what's out there, network, meet different contacts, um, show what you could do, go above and beyond. I think that's all going to really help you identify the next long-term project or attempt to hire. Yeah. I tell a lot of people as well, you know, in the legal field, they love to promote from within. Um, you know, if your ultimate goal is to become a paralegal, sometimes the best way to get in is to be a receptionist at a law firm. Um, I always tell people the first person that these attorneys <laughs> that they're going to see when they walk in is going to be you. So if you have the right work attitude, the right work ethic, they're going to take notice. And, and, and like I said, they love to promote from within and, and they'll, they want to keep, uh, keep you, if you're an asset to them, they want to keep you and, and, and work with you to, to develop your skill set and, and make you a long term part of their, their plans. So if someone were on a, uh, a, a temporary assignment or contract timeframe um, with you, are there any benefits that, um, that they might receive in terms of health benefits, um, other types of benefits that can support them? Because healthcare and medical benefits are, are tremendously uh, of concern. And so people are managing their budgets and so forth. And so can you talk a little bit about um, does Robert have offer uh, medical benefits, health benefits, and at what point are those uh, benefits, and if so, at what point are those benefits extended to your um, candidates? Yeah, so our candidates on the contract side, they are eligible to receive benefits after their first day of work on assignment. Um, they do, there is uh, various different healthcare, vision dental plans that they could partake in. Um, they also accrue sick time. They can accrue, I think they also are benefit, they can benefit from, uh, they were benefiting from the COVID supplemental leave as well. Um, those are extended, like I said, after the first day. And if there's anything I'm missing, well, you can please chime in or something else. Yeah, there's different various plans and we do have a, a dedicated benefits team that you could call and work with to get the right plan for you. It's not required to sign up, but it is a great option for many candidates. And obviously they'll last while you are working on an assignment. And if you go from one assignment to another, um, they, they continue that way as well, as long as the gap in between assignments isn't, I don't know what the exact uh gap like limit is, um, but it does, you know, you can tr transition um, or keep it while you transition from one job to another. And Rhonda, what I could do is I could supply our welcome packet so that um, maybe your participants could look at it. Um, they would, you know, it just shares everything that you have access to. That'd be great. That'd be great. We appreciate that. So can you talk a little about maybe the response time it takes? So for example, if um, someone applies for a position and we know we realize that each one is, is different, it just really depends on, there's a lot of dynamics and variables that go into play, but if someone were to apply for a position, um, how soon would they be outreached from a recruiter and then have a conversation about the position and then actually then begin to have them introduce it? meets all expectations, having them being introduced to the employer and that whole process of um, interviewing. What have you typically been seeing um, with that lately? We try to move very quickly. Um, you know, we're, we're recruiting daily. Um, so, 
you know, we, we are trying to look out for your resumes, anybody who's uh, applying through our database, uh, through our jobs, creating profiles. We are actively, you know, recruiting. So, um, you know, I would like to say we reach out to folks within, within a day or two um, to, just to kind of meet with them. Um, as a po uh, um, and in regards to the process with the clients, um, again, on my end, and it's also dependent on whether it's a contract job or a permanent job. Uh, our contract positions, they tend to move very, very quickly, um, you know, between the resume submittal review, the interview process, onboarding and starting, that can all happen within a week, um, if not less than that, to be honest. Um, permanent jobs do tend to take a little bit longer because there usually are multiple rounds of interviews uh, but for the contract uh, project-based work it could be very immediate and sometimes we even can skip the interview process they can just go from you know we 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 develop such strong relationships with our clients that uh it's sometimes it's you know we can just tell them here's <laughs> here's this person who we feel strongly about they can be there tomorrow to start working it's it's that's happened before mm -hmm. And the entire Bay Area of recruiters have access to the same pool of candidates, right, within this database. And, uh, you know, of course, each job is so different. Uh, we'll have a job where we, we meet a candidate the day of that they apply, and we actually deploy them the next day. That has happened. I, d I have a job that's remote. 500 plus employ um, employees applied to it. I don't know if we could physically call 500 <laughs> employees that quickly. So, you know, I, I would hope that everyone understands that we're going to see a fluctuation of applicants. Um, but we, we, we do try to move pretty quickly and make sure you have a, a really great candidate experience. But if all else fails and you really want to work with us, you know, pick up the phone and you can call us and we'll be happy to chat with you or direct you to the right person. Okay, well, we're going to take one more question and then we'll kind of wrap it up. But um, in terms of trying to give some guidance around if, how you might convert um, the salary for a permanent position to the equivalent hourly rate for like a contractor position, any guidance around that? Yeah, so uh, so for us, we typically, you know, the hourly rate is uh, kind of essentially based off of salary of what they might offer on a permanent basis. Uh, and, and so for us, we typically base it off a 52 week year calendar year. So I think that's 2080 hours. Uh, so, you know, that's typically how we convert it. Now, most of the times, you know, uh, when we're working with a candidate that's on a contract to hire positions, uh, a lot of times I would say our clients would actually, you know, when they're ready to convert you to a permanent employee, Sometimes, you know, they'll offer you more money than what you're getting on contract as well. Um, that's also a possibility. Um, but typically the contract hourly pay rate is based off uh, the salary of, of what that position typically pays. Okay, well, I'd like to personally thank on behalf of Nova Works, uh, Robert Have for their tremendous um, intelligence that they have shared with us. The presentation was just simply dynamic. Um, as you can see, they are an employer of choice uh, with a specialized approach to talent solutions and their intelligence um, on compensation data and emerging trends um, are just top notch. And so if you're interested in exploring opportunities with them, um, please feel free uh, to go ahead and um, check out their website at roberthalf.com. And we'll be asking um, Samir, Tony, and Neville if they could provide us with their contact information. Mm -hmm. uh, what we'll do is we will get that out to you and identify which areas uh, would be most appropriate um, so that they're not all getting the same uh, request. Um, so what we're going to ask you to do um, as well is that in an effort to help us continuously improve our offerings, we're going to be asking if you'd be so kind as to share uh, with us your thoughts and impressions of today's um, presentation. So at the conclusion of um, today's webinar, there will be a pop-up menu that will actually display um, asking you to click continue to participate in our very short, brief survey. To take advantage of today's uh, presentation, if you wanna get a copy of that, there will be on the survey a question around, do you wanna have a copy of the presentation materials? And by selecting 
that option, we will follow up with you to provide you with uh, a PDF copy of today's PowerPoint presentation. Um, also, uh, we do want to make sure that you be reminded of our great services um, that NovaWorks provide you um, through the Job Center here. Um, we encourage you to stay connected with us, um, take advantage of our very passionate career advisors, our very informative webinars and workshops that we provide, um, as well as our networking connections, of course, and our employer connections. And so we just want to thank everyone for attending today. And again, thank you so very much, Robert Half, uh, for coming today virtually uh, to share your expertise and your um, uh, willingness to support those who are in transition. So uh, without further ado, we want to wish you all a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll go ahead and say bye for now. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thank you, Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you,